Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro video countdown series. In at number 21, it's Mr. E. You have to pronounce the E to denote the exclamation mark at the end of the game. Now, this was a game that came out in 1984. It was released by Micro Power and it was developed by Adrian Stevens, who you may remember was the brains behind Killer Gorilla. Uh, similar to Killer Gorilla, uh, Mr. E is also uh, inspired by a classic arcade game, Mr. Do, which came out from uh, Universal and Taito. Um, now, Mr. E is not an official arcade port of Mr. Do, uh, but as you'll probably uh, quickly determine from this video, or indeed if you've played the game before, uh, it is remarkably similar. Um, down to very, very uh, minute detail, Adrian Stevens did a very, very good job of basically recreating the arcade game for the Beeb. It's probably one of the most faithful arcade ports of any game for the Beeb that I've played. Um, it's remarkably well done. It's got great graphics, great sound effects, um, and it's just overall really, really fun to play. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, here we go. So, uh, unlike Mr. Do, where you are controlling a clown, uh, in Mr. E, you are in fact controlling a wily wizard, uh, who is basically doing the same thing. He's trying to collect some cherries, and uh, also trying to defeat the evil oomphs. Uh, now, you don't have much in the way of weaponry here. You're basically armed with apples and a crystal ball. Um, but as we'll see, the game ratchets up the difficulty depending on what you do in the game. So you can either go for a fairly easy approach of just collecting all the cherries and getting through the levels, uh, or if you really want to play for points, you need to take on the oomphs and potentially some of the other baddies that come along as well, but we'll uh, see more of that in a minute. So there you go, lovely splash screen, Mr. E by Adrian Stevens. Um, I mean, you can already tell, even though he's supposedly meant to be a wizard, he really does look quite an awful lot like a clown there, I would say. But anyway, let's get into the game. Now, I mean, the music, first of all, is just stunning. I mean, it's proper arcade-style music. Very, very similar to, if not almost the same, as the arcade game itself, Mr. Do. So I'm here just basically trying to collect cherries at the moment, because um, that's the easier approach, I find, with this game. Um, but you do have the crystal ball, there you go, uh, it helps you to defeat one of the oomphs. Uh, and then you have to wait for the crystal ball to come back. Uh, you've also got these apples here, um, which you can use to basically squish... Oh dear, now I got nabbed by a digger there. Uh, oomphs turn into diggers when they get stuck, so you have to watch out for them. Because the oomphs, they can't actually dig through the, uh, the tunnels, unlike I, unlike I can. Um, oh, oh, hang on. There we go. All right, now I've only got, I think I've only got one oomph left, so I could go for maximum points, or I could claim the food in the middle and bring on the Maras. Um, now these guys <laughs> look an awful lot like Pac-Man ghosts with mouths, um, and they basically just hunt you, hunt around, but I'm going to take the last cherry and complete the level. Um, the benefit of the Maras is that they pause the oomphs, which means that you can then take a pot shot at the oomphs with your crystal ball without them moving around. Um, but they are quite a lot faster than the oomphs, so you have to then evade them. Um, and you can only bring them on once all of the oomphs have come out of that central area there where you can see them spawning in the middle. Uh, once they all come out, that turns into a piece of food, as you saw. And um, yeah, that basically means that you can you can turn on the Maras, or bring on the Maras if you want to. Uh, oh, oh dear, um, oh, hang on, oh, oh, oh. Ah, went up, I went up slightly too late there, I was aiming for those cherries, but it was, clearly wasn't going to happen, alright, uh, now, let's, oh, I've lost an apple there, never mind, alright, let's take those cherries, that, oh no, I've opened up a space, ah, that was bad, okay, hang on, let's come here, and, nope, what are you doing, dear oh dear, right, well, um, I'm going to blame that on trying to give some explanation for the game, because uh, it didn't do terribly well there, but uh, I, I hopefully will do a little bit better in, uh, in a few more few more playthroughs. Um, I've played this game a fair amount, so uh, I do, generally speaking, know what I'm doing. It's always tempting fate saying that. I do like the musical scale that you get there. If you collect each cherry in sequence, it just gradually, gradually goes up, 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 which is quite fun. So, okay, let's just, let's just focus on... Uh, Focus on getting these cherries, shall we? So let's get down here. Oh, let's go across here now. Hang on. How about squishing with an apple? There we go. Oh, 
dear. It's getting a bit frenetic. Might bring on the Maras. There we go. That means I can just keep out of their way. Oh, I got nabbed by a Mara. Mara? Mara? Now, the other bad guy, by the way, is the uh, is the letter monster who... Uh, you notice that the words extra are written at the top there, and there's a sort of blue block that kind of highlights each of the letters in turn. Now, that uh, occasionally just turns up within the grid and, and chases you around, and basically you can either choose to squish it with an apple or uh, blat it with your crystal ball, which I think turns it into an apple, uh, similar to the Maras, actually. Right, okay, now we're going to go down here. And I've got all of the umps have spawned now, so let's just do my cherries. Let's let's bring on bring on the Maras and grab that last cherry. There we go. Excellent stuff. Now we're through to scene three. Um, now these, I think, eventually they loop around in terms of the the different grids. Um, but on, it's an arcade game, so obviously the aim of uh, playing Mr. E, Mr. E is to maximise the points. And you can just do what I'm doing here and just go around gathering cherries, but oh, or losing lives. Um, but that won't get you the maximum score. Um, you really do need to be taking on the umps. Uh, and in fact, if you kill all of the umps before collecting all the cherries, that also completes the level as well. So you do have that option available. And I think I'm right in saying you get more points if you complete a level that way. Because it is a little bit more challenging to do so. All right, we're on to the fourth one here, but I have no lives remaining, so um, I'm not sure how well I'm going to end up doing, but uh, let's, let's keep going with the cherries for now. Oh, I've got my crystal ball back. Oh, there you go. The crystal ball is is, is not a precision weapon. Um, it basically rebounds off the walls, and sometimes it'll go where you want it to, and other times it really doesn't. Uh, right, should we bring on the Maras? Yeah, why not? They're always good fun. Quite like the music as well. Ooh. Right, hang on. Let's see if we can squish a few of them. There we go. Oh! Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> They're really hounding me now. Uh... Oh, there we go. Managed to get the apple in, in play. Oh, it's getting a bit sluggish now because there's so much going on. Oh, oh dear. Well, not too shabby. 25,650 points there. But um, anyway, we'll, we'll definitely keep going because... I really enjoy playing the game, to be honest, so I'm just going to keep going and see if we can do a little bit better. Um, I don't think it has a high score table, uh, so you just have to remember uh, how well you did. Because it doesn't, looking at it, it doesn't seem like it actually gives you your uh, previous high score either, so you have to just remember. See, in the days of emulator, you can take a screenshot, I suppose. That's the other way of uh, keeping track. Oh dear, that was that was terrible, terrible, terrible performance. Okay, let me try and do a little bit better. It is a game that does require a certain amount of concentration, so you know you do have to pay attention to what you're doing. But if I just sit here quietly, paying attention and collecting cherries, probably won't make the most exciting review. So I'll try to. Uh, multitask here. Oh, you see, he turned into a digger very briefly there, if you noticed that. Um, that's that's where the uh, the oomph gets stuck. And then, and then when it turns into a digger, it's able to um, remove some of the uh, the tunnels. Now, this game, uh, in, in common, actually, with, with Mr. Do as well, uh, it owes a certain degree of uh, its uh, inspiration to another arcade game, uh, Dig Dug. Um, those of you who have ever watched Stranger Things will know that that's referenced in one of the uh, episodes. Uh, Dig Dug was a similar sort of game where you're basically just digging through tunnels and trying to squish things with uh, objects, similar to this one. But um, there's a lot more to this game, I think, than, than Dig Dug. And actually, it's, it, it's, it's really kind of crazy and almost frenetic in its, uh, in its style, because you've got quite a few um, game dynamics at play. The fact that you can squish things with the apples, obviously. You've got the music going on with the cherries. Um, and the fact that you can bring on the Maras at any given point when uh, when all the umps have come out. Ooh, there goes a letter monster coming out the top there. Right. Let's just clear some cherries and get through the levels. Maybe that's the, uh, the thing to do here. 
quite handy how you can start moving before the umps actually come out. It's, uh, it's a nice touch. Uh, I mean, for 1984, this is a top, top game. I mean, I, the, the, as I say, as I was saying in the introduction, oh dear, walk straight into a digger there. The the way that it mimics the arcade game, or the you know the Mr. Do arcade game, is just stunning. It's really, really very good. Um, now I don't know if Adrian Stevens did the similar thing that he did with Killer Gorilla, where he basically just played lots of Donkey Kong at the arcade and then worked out how to construct the game from that, or or if he perhaps had um, access to anything more than that. I mean, it wasn't an official port, as I was saying, of, of Mr. Do, so I imagine he probably didn't have any source code to work with. Right. Now... Oh, hang on. Let's see if we can... Now we've got a few cherries going on there. Hang on. Hopefully if the Maras don't nab me, I'll be good to go. There we are. You do have to be careful of walking into the umps, even when they're stationary. They can still kill you. But yes, I mean, I'm going to assume that Adrian basically just played an awful lot of of, of Mr. Do um, and just reconstructed it from, from, from memory of playing the game, which, I mean, I'm always in awe of people who were able to do that back in the day. I mean, not just coding a game solo, but doing so from just having played another game is, is incredible stuff, it really is. Now, what do I do here? Do I want to bring on the Maras? Yeah, why not? They're always good value. Hey! And comical as well. They look a little bit like Muppets, actually, the Maras. Right. Scene three. Getting a little bit better on the life front now. Obviously dangerous every time I say that, of course, but let's, let's just... Ooh, I'm going to squish myself. You can kill yourself with a falling apple, just to bear in mind. Uh, so yeah, don't don't try avoiding going too crazy with the uh, the apple drops. Similar to Repton, where you can kill yourself with a boulder if you come at it from underneath the earth. Right. Okay. Scene four. Right. Okay, and then I'll clear out some of these cherries here. I mean, the music is is very very samey on each level, but it's it's such a jolly little tune that it, I personally don't find it gets irritating. Uh, some some background game music in uh, particularly some Beeb games can, after a while, get a little bit annoying. But um, there's only so many times you want to hear the Airwolf theme, obviously. But uh, I do think that the tune in this one is such a is such a jolly little yeah little piece of music but even though it just repeats over and over again I, I can't hold it against the game really can't I think it's great Ooh. oh no oh I squashed myself with an apple after saying I should avoid doing so killed myself with my own apple not many times you can say that in real life um, outside of possibly Snow White apples don't oh what am I doing that's about two lives in quick succession oh, I was doing so well as well right come on Let's, let's 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 make short shrift of this and just get get these uh, get these cherries collected. All right. Okay. Now if we can just go down there. There we go. Right onto the sixth level. This is more progress I think than I've made so far. I am hoping that I might get an extra life uh, after clearing so many points, but I actually don't remember uh, what the what the points threshold is for that. Oh dear. Oh no, the letter monster! Uh oh. Okay. Can we bring on the Maras? Why not? Oh yeah, see, they, they come out of the letter monster, interestingly. Oh no! Oh, that was a shame. I only had two more cherries to go as well, and we'd have got to level seven. 31,900, slightly better score than, than before as well. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll give it another play, another play. I mean, it's that kind of game, really. You don't really want to stop playing once you start. Very much a uh, Pringle-style game in that regard. Um, and, yeah, it, it just... Although, it, in some respects, you might think, well, you know, what's there to see after having watched it a few times played through? 
because of the, the nature of the dynamics within the game, even level one can play out very, very differently depending on how you how you go about it, and indeed how good or bad you are at the game. Um, proving, once again, not to be a, a stellar player of uh, this particular gun, but probably making a little bit of a better stab at it than some games I've played. Now, I have a confession to make that this was uh, this was a Beeb game that I didn't have uh, when I was growing up. Um, so this is one of the, uh, the Beeb games that I've come to uh, a bit later in life. Um, I remember seeing on the Stardot forums some years ago uh, that... Uh, I forget now who it was, but somebody had basically reconstructed the splash screen art for Mr. Do um, and had done it for Mr. E. And at the time, I thought, oh, what is this Mr. E? Uh, and so I, I went over to the BBC Micro Games website and uh, downloaded it, and I was absolutely captivated. And I could fully understand why it's one of those games that um, is very beloved of, uh, of Beeb game players. Uh, very, 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 very uh, much a... Uh, classic. Um, so as I say, although not one that I grew up with, definitely one that I have grown to love very, very quickly. Um, and you can see why. And that's why it's uh, coming at number 21, you know, ahead of many, many other games uh, that I did play as a child. Um, this one is, uh, yeah, one that's a little bit of a sneaky extra that I didn't know about at the time. Um, in general, the, the the Beeb games that I was most familiar with as a child were uh, the ones that came out a little bit later, actually, just, uh, just because of well, because of my age, I suppose. Um, so some of the early classics, I uh, have to say, I, I some of them passed me by, and this was one of them. But uh, yeah, very pleased to be bringing it into the countdown because it's very very deserving of its place. I think you'd agree. I'd uh, be very keen to hear from people who uh, are, you know, big fans of the game. Uh, perhaps those of you that played Mr. Do in the arcades as well. We'd love to hear from you as well. Um, hear your thoughts on how faithful uh, this game is to the original arcade. Oops. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to just hear some comparisons. Um, as I understand it, it is a very, very faithful adaptation. Um, so much so that... I think some people are surprised that it wasn't an official port because it really does play very much the same as the uh, as the original. Uh, albeit, as I say, that they took a few uh, creative uh, ch story changes. Um, I actually don't know if in Mister Do if what, what, what the names of the creatures are. I'm, I don't know if they were called things like Oomps and Maras or if that's another. Oh gosh, look, they're attacking me with apples. It's a bit cheeky. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know if that was just a, an Adrian Stevens design flourish, a story flourish, um, or whether they uh, whether they were in fact uh, called Oomphs and Maras and Letter Monsters in the original Mr. Do. Um, right. Well, I'm going to definitely give it at least one more try, I think, because um, it'd be nice to really give it a full playthrough. Uh, it's, it's one of those games that's very deserving of... Uh, being fully showcased, I think you'd agree. I don't want to shortchange this wonderful game. Right, let's bring on the Maras. Okay. Oh, hang on. Now. Oh, what am I doing? I walked into an oomph. Oh, I even said only moments ago, don't walk into a stationary oomph. And what did I do? Walk into a stationary oomph. Lessons for life. Never walk into a stationary oomph. Uh, or a walking Mara. Or a walking oomph. Basically, don't walk into anything that's not a cherry. I think it's probably the best uh, piece of advice for this game. It's an interesting uh, question for historians of arcade games of why the uh, the pair of cherries became such a such a symbol of early arcade games um, and fruit, you know, fruit machines and and, and other um, sort of 80s paraphernalia. I don't know why cherries in particular were so. Uh... Oh dear. Such a popular item to be collecting. Uh, Pac-Man, I think, collected cherries at certain points in the game. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe it does derive from the concept of the fruit machine, although I don't really know where the fruit machine gets the idea of lining up fruit from. But anyway, cherries, definitely one of those sort of 80s uh, favourite design choices. Also an excellent penny sweet in the old pick and mix. Um, you can still buy them from Haribo, the... Uh, cherries. 
here I am again, once again, talking about sweets. Can't help myself, really. It's uh, probably one of those things that I like almost as much as Beeb games. Right, bring on the Maras. That'll help us get the last few cherries. Thank you, Maras. I still remember the first time that I accidentally activated the Maras. I didn't actually know what had happened. I thought the game had suddenly just gone haywire when they, everything froze and then these blue meanies started roving around the uh, roving around the grid. Well, it's not really a grid, is it? It's more of a set of tunnels, I suppose you'd call it. Oh dear. This is not good news, people. Oh, hang on. I think I might need Mara assistance at this point because there's too much going on here. There we go. That sorted us out there. Thank you, Maras. Okay. Got any lives in the tank, though, so... Probably going to... find that this... this final playthrough is going to come to a close pretty soon, because I don't think I've got quite enough aptitude to get through this. Oh. Oh no, <laughs> that was very poor. Unfortunately, although I managed to nab the letter monster, I turned it into an apple, uh, which slowed my progress. Well, anyway, I think we're going to leave it there. Um, so this was Mr. E, not to be confused with Mr. Do, even though it looks very, very similar. And all to its credit for doing so, because it's an excellent arcade game. I'm going to call it an arcade port, because I think that's basically what it is. Um, but that is no disservice to Adrian Stevens, who presumably managed to put this together completely through experience of the original game. So, great stuff. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that review. And if you've never played Mr. E before, uh, it's definitely a game to go out and seek. As I say, it wasn't one I was familiar with growing up, but I love it now, and uh, I'm sure you will too. Anyway, we're going to leave it there. So, I hope you've enjoyed the review, and I hope you'll join me for the next review in the series. And until then, goodbye.